evening, YouTube. You guys are watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we are playing Zephyr. And actually, this isn't my build. Zephyr is really good at being able to splash so many different counterparts. This time around, you guys are going to be seeing Hunter Astonislaus, uh Infernity Zephyrs, which is a very good concept. The ideology behind it is to make cards like Charge Warrior um, with Oracle Zephyr on your side of the field to stack Infernity Archfiend to the top of your deck. That meaning you get to draw him, uh, special summon him, and then add Infernity cards such as Infernity Beetle, Infernity Launcher, um, Infernity Barrier from your deck to your hand, extending your combos. His idea of this is extremely amazing, especially since there's so many searchable parts inside of his deck. This time around, he doesn't really draw the most optimal build or the most optimal hand, but it's still a hand to work with because people tend to forget that Zephroth is a walking low or high scale. As long as you have him, you're probably going to be able to complete your scale. All you need is another monster to your side of the field. And the fact that uh, Zephyr Nui allows you to continuously search every time it's summoned and every time it's destroyed is another good thing about the card. Uh, the Zephyr War is also an amazing card. Being able to destroy one of your Zephyr cards in order to destroy your opponent. The most important thing is that it can be activated during your opponent's turn from your hand. So it is a legitimate hand trap. I know, that's freaking awesome. This time around, he's going to be summoning Infernity Beetles and then using them both uh, to make Metaphor Scores, which is an awesome card. You guys don't know when it's used, uh, when it's summoned using a Pendulum Monster, it's to take control of an opponent's monster permanently so it didn't really matter if the opponent was going to summon the azorites it was going to get taken before it can resolve its effect this time around i want to show you guys uh, i guess what would be the flexibility and how this deck can come back for almost any type of board wipe he's going to get mirror force twice in one game why because hunters hunters once you see one mirror force you, you probably would think that gee maybe another mirror force might come but no 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 that's not how it works as you guys can see, he's going to stack the Infernity Archfiend, and then that's going to give him the Infernity Barrier, but he's going to lose it all, not to a Stormy Mirror Force, not to a Quaking Mirror Force, not to a Drowning Mirror Force, a uh, Mirror Force. And you don't, you, really, I don't even know how to feel about that. Like, if, if somebody Mirror Forced me in this day and age, I probably would cry, because I'm not strong enough to handle Mirror Force. It's already Quaking Mirror Force, Drowning Mirror Force, and Stormy Mirror Force, but now we have to deal with Mirror Force? Like... This time around, he's going to make another amazing board. Coral Dragon, and then summon the Zephyr cards, and then Pendulum summon, and Nama, Nama, Nama. Do a whole bunch of stuff, only to get Mirror Forced again. And so, he's going to summon the Charge Warrior, stack the uh, Ash Blossom. So, now he has a free Ash Blossom to his end. Then make the Nirvana High Paladin, and then get the Zephyr Divine Strike, and it gets Mirror Forced. Fortunately for him, it grants him a card in the process. The Blue Eyes player, uh, having three Mirror Force, probably exhausted all of his resources and doesn't really have much else. Uh, Hunter is going to put the Zephroth into his extra deck because now he is about to get nasty with it. Uh, he's going to destroy the Whitestone of Bludgeon and trigger his Zephroth, summon the Zephroth, use his effect to tribute itself, and then Pendulum summon again. That's right. This deck actually has the ability to Pendulum Summon twice, and that is the kicker about Zephyrus. Uh, the most amazing thing with this deck is being able to Pendulum Summon twice, to be able to exceed, to be able to stack your deck, and to lose your best cards to Kaiju Gamsi. If that card's too strong, all right? Now he's going to Pendulum Summon again, and that should completely run the table for him. Zephyrus is going to be summoned. He's going to Pendulum Summon one more time. Uh, I think that that's like the most amazing ability, the ability to Pendulum Summon and also uh, to have the ability to do uh, super synchro plays, make Crystal Wing uh, at any given time, make so many things. In this particular game, he's going to quit out before uh, Hunter gets to make his board, but this would be uh, somewhat of the perfect board, something that uh, you guys could look to inspire to, something that this deck actually does on a regular, as long as you have Charge War and Oracle Zephyr, and there's so many ways to search your card, you were completely fine. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed his build breakdown, now let's get to the deck profile. On to Hunter's deck profile. This is, I want to say, not 100% finished, but it is a pretty good build. I still have to get him to play certain cards in there to get him to play that sauce so he can go undefeated, so I can make that undefeated deck profile. I know you guys 
are waiting to look for but he runs three copies of Safrock, uh easily the best card in the deck um when it's in the pendulum scale it becomes uh any scale you wanted to by putting a zephyr monster into the extra deck uh two copies of zephyr nui this is probably the second best zephyr card um when it is a uh, pendulum summon or when it's destroyed by battle or card effect you get to add one yangzing or zephyr spell or trap card from your deck to your hand uh three or two copies of uh zephyr shishin Ze Zephra Zephra session. I think I said it right. Uh, when it's normal summon, flip summon a pendulum summon, he gets to destroy a Zephra and a face down card the opponent controls. Same thing with Zephra Thuban. It's destroy a, uh, a Zephra card and a face up card your opponent controls. Uh, the Infernity Archfiend, because it is completely bananas in this deck, stacking it to the top of your deck to draw it. Uh, one copy of Zephroxy. Not only is it a low scale, it also makes uh, your other Zephyr or Yangzing monsters tutor. Uh, two Ghost Ash in beautiful spring it's probably uh one of the more meta defining cards right now i don't think it's uh the best card hands down of the format it does have some weaknesses but ultimately it is a great card uh three copies of infernity beetle uh, this card allows him to trigger so many things, getting two level two tuners for the price of one. And then just because it's an Infernity card, you can spell something with Infernity Launcher and search it with Infernity Archfiend. So those are really good traits that it has. Uh, three copies of Red Resonator. Um, him being able to normal summon him grants him a special summon. If these two are the only two cards in his hand, you are prepared for almost an instant crystal wing, or not an instant crystal wing, but uh, some trouble, especially when it comes to the Oracle of Zephra. Uh, one Pendulum it is our first zero scale card that allows us to add banished pendulum scales to our extra deck. So really good when we're using Zephyr Divine Strike. Uh, one Raigeki, uh, two Resonator Calls to search the red resonators. One Duelist Advent to search the pendulum. Best card of the set. Uh, one Soul Charge. Uh, I mean, anytime you activate Soul Charge, you're gonna open with some pretty good boards, especially in this deck. Uh, two copies of Terraforming to search the Oracle of Zephyr. It's pretty good. Uh, three copies of Zephyr Confidence. This card searches any Zephyr card, so the Oracle of Zephyr and any Zephyr Pendulum Scale is in play, as well as Zephyr Divine Strike. Uh, one copy of Ignite Reload. I want him to substitute this for an Upstart Goblin, because uh, you can stack your cards to the top of the deck, and then Upstart Goblin, it's also a, it's basically a free search. Uh, one copy of Infernity Launcher. Uh, basically, what this does is a special summon Archfiend from the graveyard. You have Archfiend and Beetle for the graveyard. Tell your opponent to prepare themselves. They're going to get some type of Crystal Wing or some type of huge play. Uh, three copies of Oracle of Zephyr. This is the most important card of the deck. Um, the most important thing is when it's activated, you can have one Zephyr monster from your deck to your hand. When you ritual summon, you can send one monster from your field to the deck, or shuffle one monster on the field to the deck. When you fusion summon, you can special summon one monster from your hand. When you synchro summon, you can place one monster from your deck and place it on the top of your deck. And, ooh, excuse me. And when you XE summon, you can draw one card and discard one card. So uh, we definitely abuse the fact that the synchro summoning, summoning charge warrior to basically stack any card we want to or any monster we want to draw it. Uh, one copy of uh, Zephyr War. This card is like nothing less of awesome. Being able to destroy a Zephyr card and an opponent's card on uh, the opponent's turn from your hand uh, just redefines hand trap. Uh, Zephyr or Infernity Barrier, really good with the Infernity Monsters. Two copies of Divine Strike because it allows us to banish Zephyr cards from the extra decks so are practically free. And then one copy of Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, searchable through Danglong and also uh, triggers uh, our Zephyr Nui and then triggers Zephyr Nui on your opponent's turn. Uh, for the extra deck, one Ultimate and Zulkin, one Naverna High Plality. This card is freaking awesome in the deck. It, it's just really good. Uh, one Shao Fang. I've never seen him summon this, but I guess it's really good against Zoo, seeing that uh, if you use uh, Zephyr Nui, they won't be able to use their Earth Monster effects. Uh, one copy of Void Ogre. Really good card as well. He runs enough darks. One copy of Crystal Wing. Uh, basically, this is what the deck is for. Uh, one copy of Infernity Doom Dragon, another great card, uh, easy destruction, and it has Infernity in the name to trigger uh, Infernity Barrier. One copy of Ignister, really good card. One copy of Stardust. He really said that the extra deck is very flexible, so if you guys disagree with some of these choices, you could change them for other choices. One copy of Ancient Pixie Dragon, I have to read this card, but it's a really good card. After resolving a filled spell card that was activated during your turn, draw one card, so... That's really good. And once per turn, you can target one face of attack position monster on the field, destroy that target. 
so there must be a field spell card to activate and resolve that effect but it's a really good card one coral dragon uh one benefit horse the probably the best card of the deck uh, because it allows you to snatch your opponent's cards or the best uh synchro monster level six behind charge warrior when a synchro summon draw one card you pair this with oracle you can tutor any monster from your deck to your hand one constellar ptolemy m7 because sixes are so easy to come by and then one dark rebellion i assume he plays this over castell because he has a bigger problem with getting rid of big board threats than anything else that is it for the extra deck now this is not a real side deck this is just some card that you could play inside of the deck you could play obelisk the tormentor this has been played in the ocg builds uh it's really good you tribute five monsters you can destroy all your opponent's monsters and then i'm a 4k beater you're probably going to do a whole bunch of other stuff on top of that obelisk is no joke in this deck uh the yangzing engine which consists of swanee uh chaiwen uh boxia and danglong this allows for some really wacky plays uh just awesome plays going on like you can sync with somebody to do so many things with it there's so many combos involved with this it would take me forever to discuss uh shout out zephyr core and shout out uh zephyr palissa if you're going for a more zephyr a pure zephyr route is nothing less of amazing these two cards are awesome especially shout out core um it's very relevant right now being able to special summon uh a zephyr monster from your pendulum zone to your side of the field and Zephyr Palissa, being able to special summon a Zephyr uh, monster from your graveyard to your side of the field is still relevant. Uh, Jet Synchron along with uh, Jet Warrior and Excel Synchron. This actually, I, I didn't know it would combo with so many great plays, but it definitely does. It was something I was running in my build. Uh, one copy of Rebellion Mech. It is an alternative to your level 9 if you don't want to play Shao Feng. Uh, and then Yazi. I feel like Yazi is really good in this deck because uh, if it destroys itself, you can tutor uh, Zephyr Nui to your side of the field. So pretty freaking good uh Adai's meteor bird dragon allows you to special summon one of your zephyr monsters in your pin zone to your side of the field further extending your place ancient fairy dragon allows you to special summon a level four or lower monster from your hand it also allows you to cycle through oracle zephyr if your opponent has a field spell card destroy their field spell card um and then obviously the upstart goblin i've been trying to get him to play or i'm going to try to get him to play over the ignite reload but ignite reload still a really good card that's it for the deck profile thank you guys so much i want to know what do you guys think about zephyrus let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes that way we can get another zephyr deck profile by hopefully an undefeated deck profile from printer please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy